Larned's a popular spot this evening. Our second inductee out of the city of Larned, Kansas, is one of the best known and most successful basketball coaches that the state of Kansas has ever produced. Coached at the high school level at Beloit, coached at the junior college level at Hutchinson, met success everywhere he went, was a graduate of Kansas State University where he attended as a football player, but became certainly one of the best known and very highly regarded successful coaches. Gene Cady, six times named the National Coach of the Year. In all of his years as the head coach of the Purdue Boilermakers, took the Boilermakers to 17 NCAA tournaments and six Big Ten championships. This is truly one of the great basketball coaches in the history of the game, and for sure one of the best ones to come out of the state of Kansas. We're very proud of you, Coach Gene Cady. Thank you, Ted. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I'm very humbled by this. Congratulations to the other inductees. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't believe it when they nominated me. I, I appreciate the Kansas Hall of Fame nominating me for this and inducting me into this great, great hall. Uh, so many people in here that I've looked up to over the years and idolized, like a John Zook or a Jack Parr or, or a Bryce Durbin, that all these people really have had uh, a big part of my life and uh, you don't really realize how lucky you are because you're going through all this and I uh, want to introduce the people at my table because they're all very special to me. I want to introduce my son Danny, very proud of him, his wife Angie and their son uh, Ray, my grandson, and uh, uh, Linda Hansen and Bob Hansen uh, became friends of Pat and mine at the in the NABC uh, board, we served as board members together and became good friends of ours. And Linda picked me up today at the airport. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Randy Stang is part of the Hutz Juco family. He's the athletic director there, and his father was a great player uh, for Hutch. And then Dick Geisel was my assistant. Stand up, Dick. Dick Geisel was a great player in his own right at Hutch and then Kansas. And, Hate to say that because he's a Jayhawk, but uh, uh, he was a great loyal assistant for eight years and we had a lot of fun. He's more like a brother. And then my presenter tonight, uh, Sam Butterfield, stand up, Sam. He was my boss at Hutch for uh, nine years and uh, we had a lot of fun together and uh, I couldn't have had a better boss and he was uh, tremendously appreciated. I'd just like for all of you to give that table a round of applause because they're very special to me. I think John Zook hit it on the head when he talked about loyalty and talked about family, and those are all very uh, special to me. And I know that uh, a radio station asked me yesterday, what was, what was uh, the big deal about growing up in Kansas? What did you get out of that? And I said, well, first of all, I learned about my mom and dad were my, really my idols. They taught me about integrity, how to treat people right. And uh, it's just a, a, a state that that cherishes their education. I think they cherish edu uh, your integrity and your honesty because I think to motivate people, you have to be honest and uh, you, have a, you have to have enthusiasm. Those are the two things I really always tried to do. I felt like if my players could trust me, then uh, we could get something done and we had a lot of fun uh, doing that. So as I went through the years, started thinking back about uh, playing in Kansas. It was always a privilege. I had great coaches in high school, Merwin Wilson, uh, Tom Buckley, um, then I went to Junior College of Garden City with Jack Morris and Don Talley and uh, Coach Estes. That all, all those coaches were special to me because they taught me how to work hard and how to sacrifice and uh, how to train right and do the things that it takes to try to reach your, level, your top level best. And one of the things I always try to do is get my players when they came to Purdue as a freshman that they left a lot better player and mostly a lot better person. And I was taught that by my coaches I had, and then, then when I went to Kansas State, uh, Bus Murdy's was great, uh, Ward Haley, I saw his picture up on the board, uh, Ray Wathier, a baseball coach, and of course the guy that I probably l learned my basketball from, the fundamentals of, uh, was Tex Winter, because uh, uh, Roy DeWitts was a guard on that team when uh, Tex went to the Final Four with Jack Parr, by the way, and 
Roy and I played baseball together at K-State, and we always talked about basketball and how he would like to be a high school coach. And uh, I got a chance to go with the Steelers, and my knee didn't hold up, so I, stayed, I came back in late August, and, and the only job in Kansas was open was at Bloyd because Bill, Bill Cornwell went to Shawnee Mission North, and I got to take a high school job at, at Bloyd, and that was great because they, were, they had uh, great tradition there. I never had a job that didn't have great tradition. Lloyd had it, Hutchuko had it. So uh, at, in high school, uh, you know, I didn't know uh, up from down about coaching because I was 22, and I know I love the game. I love I love working with people. So the biggest thing that happened to me at Lloyd in those years was to learn how to cope with parents, and uh, uh, the, which has changed a lot now because I was lucky that I got to coach in those years, but. Uh, uh, it was a tremendous opportunity for me because here's a, a real poor kid from Larned, Kansas that really didn't have anything except his college degree, which it turned out to be the most important thing in my life next to my wife. And uh, we went to the state three out of seven years. And if you are a basketball coach in Kansas and you go to the state, like Jay Frazier can uh, back me up on this, it means quite a bit just to get to go to the state. And of course, then you hope you have kids that really want to win the state and that's special in this state and that's kind of how I got my blood to coach basketball was to be part of the basketball scene in March because when I was an eighth grader Lauren had won the state and Bill Hunsinger and Bill and uh, Bob Rice and those kids uh, really motivated me as, a, as an eighth grader to become interested in basketball so the years go on and we do pretty well at Beloit and they keep winning and uh, a gentleman by the name of Sam Butterfield out at, Hutch, out at Garden City was a high school coach, and I was a, 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 a student at Garden City Junior College, and we, our practices backed up each other, the like high school practice, Garden City High School, and then the JUCO would practice on the same court, and Sam and I was, would visit, and it started a great long uh, relationship and a friendship. And as I got to know Sam, I could see this is a man of integrity, and, and uh, like my dad, I trusted him. And uh, as we got into the coaching world, and I was a coach at, at, at uh, at Beloit, he told me that since he had known me at, at Garden City that if I could ever get my master's degree that he would like to retire from coaching at Hutch and bring me in as his assistant. I about fainted to think that he thought that much of me to be able to say, get your, you know, your next degree because you had to have your master's to teach at Hutch because you had to teach and coach. And lo and behold, as I coached at Beloit, he, we had career days and Sam would come up and talk to the students about coming to Hutchinson Junior College about their careers and I became very much closer to him and I finally got my master's at Kansas State and then I also in those three years learned about the triple post from Tex. Tex. So all these things were working together. We were winning at Bloyd so I could keep my job. So you know how essential that was. Because all I knew was one year contracts. If you win, you're back next year, right? Never heard of a, a, turn, a three year contract that was unheard of. So now, uh, with my seventh year at, at Beloit, and uh, we go 28 and 1, Chapman beat us in the regional, and they win the state, and we don't. And Sam decides he'd like to hire me as a, an assistant at Hutch, so I go there to Hutch and was his assistant one year. We got third in the nation that year, right, Sam? Didn't we get third in the national tournament? So that was a great experience, and I was very lucky to be part of his uh, family. And he had a great wife, Joe, and his two boys were great, Steve and Scott. And uh, that was a great time. And then I became the head coach, and we win the we go to the national six out of nine years. So now you're winning, but I'm making about twelve thousand a year, and I'm teaching twenty-five hours a week in biology. I'm assistant football coach for John Maytosh, and I'm recruiting my butt off for the JUCO uh, program. And we're winning about twenty-five games a year, and I'm getting paid nothing just like the rest of them there. But uh, so I'm thinking, I need to get out of here. So lo and behold, Eddie Sutton comes along and, and um, I go to Arkansas with him and we have Sidney Moncrief and he allowed us to go to the Final Four. And it's amazing how a Final Four assistant staff gets better jobs. Why is that? I don't understand that. So I got lucky, got the Western Kentucky job. We won the league there after being there two years. And then uh, Fred Shaw saw me coach a, a, a USA team out in Colorado Springs, and when Lee Rose went to South Florida, Fred Shaw told George King, the AD, there's a guy down at Western Kentucky out of hire. So, 1980, I went to Purdue and uh, chased my tail for 25 years there, and had tremendous uh, opportunities and a lot of fun, and and uh, we won the Big Ten title six times and. 
I got to coach some USA teams. I'd like to uh, introduce Bob Chipman. Stand up, Bob. Bob Chip was my assistant on several USA teams uh, in Germany and Cuba, and uh, he followed me to Taiwan, and he was just a great friend and a tremendous uh, coach in his own right. So uh, all those things happen, and you develop all these friendships, and like with you people here, this is just, uh, uh, it just humbles me to think I could be part of a class like with Maurice Green. Maurice and I marched in together at Sydney in the Olympics, and, and uh, he was fun to, I always enjoyed his sprinting ability because he was such a great competitor and then I saw Jackie play at Southwest and John Q. Hammonds is a person that I've always admired the way he works and it just every, it seems like everybody you see in here there's something about you that's special about your life and you're just part of the Kansas picture and the frame is beautiful and I love being here and I really appreciate you making me part of this and uh, uh, it's just something that uh, it happens uh, when, if you're lucky and I was a Poor kid that came out of Kansas wrote a, couple, a book about three years ago, along with a, a sports writer there in uh, in Lafayette. And I said Jeff Washburn was the author, and I said Jeff, I don't want to write a book. You can't make any money writing a book. And we wrote a book, and I was right. We made no money. <laughs> but I wrote the book because I wanted young people to understand you can come from a poor family, and if you got the ambition, and if you love sports, and if you love people. You gotta keep your dreams alive. And if you got a dream, you never give it up. And Jackie, she fought her fanny off to try to be a great basketball player, but injuries wouldn't let her. And uh, Jack Parr was a good friend of mine in Beloit because he was a, a salesman and sporting good world for me there. So you just, it's just on and on and on how you meet all these people that's special in the sporting world. And this Hall of Fame brings us together. And Ted, I really thank you for having me be part of this. This is very, very special to me, and I just can't believe you selected me. Thank you very much.